so many Christians don't get that part. They trust God, so to speak. They're looking for God to do things, but they don't know their responsibility to make sure it works together. This is the principle of using law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. We have to know how this thing works to enjoy the benefits of the kingdom. The pressure and heat of the hot gases provide the force needed to turn the turbines and the shell. you got to be involved in this process. God wants you to have every promise, but there's a part you play in it. Do something. Welcome to another edition of Fixing the Money Thing. I'm Gary Cassie. And I'm Dorena Cassie. And we're excited to share with you the other side of faith today. So many times people are looking why things aren't working. Gary, they're like, uh, so they're often, struggling. So often. So often Christians say, Pastor, why isn't this happening? What we know, I'm, I know the Word of God. A lot of times, Dorinda, it's the natural side that you mix with your faith that they miss. And today on Fixing the Money Thing, we're going to dive into that topic and help people maybe see the missing little link yes. that will cause the kingdom to manifest in their life. Yes. Where does your responsibility start and stop and where does God's pick up at? Good so question. many times those lines are blurred in point. believers' minds. Sometimes they get in one side of the ditch, it's all going to be God. They get in the other side of the ditch or I've got to do it all and they toil and they they hurt their life and their health trying to work a workaholic basically. Yeah. So where do you come in the middle to meet God where you see faith work and faith with works and you see the kingdom come to manifest in your life. That's what we're talking about today. That's right. You did an incredible teaching on that, and we're gonna go to that right now. We're beginning a new series. I, I know it's gonna help you. And turn to your neighbor and say, it's really gonna help you. <clears throat> the other side of faith, the other side of faith. The phone call came unexpected at about three o'clock in the morning as we picked the phone up, the, the woman on the phone was a little frantic as she said, Pastor, the baby has been born dead. This story happened many years ago in our early days of our church, but I relate it because I think it'll fit our topic today. Dorinda and I, of course, you know, we knew what the devil was going to do because this woman had decided to have a home birth, and uh, she had a midwife, and she had a prayer coach, and she had done due diligence, and the baby was born dead of no fault of the home birth. And so we got up and we began to pray and we began to head towards the hospital. The ambulance had come and declared the baby dead. And uh, they were escorting it, or, you know, transporting the baby to, uh, to the Newark hospital. They took the baby in a separate ambulance. Uh, Jennifer, the mother, would be following in a second ambulance. And as we were driving to Newark, Halfway there, all of a sudden, it's like a wind came through the car, and whoosh, I looked at Drenda the same exact time she looked at me, and I said, the Holy Spirit just said that baby's fine and perfect. And she said, the Holy Spirit just told me that baby's fine and perfect. The baby is declared dead on, on arrival at the hospital as well. But I knew what the Lord had told me, so as we approached the hospital, I, as a spiritual scientist, I'm very interested in what I'm about to see. So as we walked into the emergency room, there is a group of nurses, about six or seven, around a baby that is perfect, crying, beautiful baby, but no smiles. It's hard to imagine women around a baby not smiling, but they had the look of shock on their face. So we asked about Jennifer, the mother. Jennifer, as I said, was escorted separately, and at this time, she knew nothing of her baby's welfare or what had happened to the baby. So Drenda went up to maternity where Jennifer was and walked in. There's a nurse with Jennifer. And Drenda says, Jennifer, your, your baby is just beautiful. She's fine. She's perfect. Looks wonderful. Put uh, Haley's picture up. There's, there's Haley right there. And completely normal, no perfect, no mental issues, nothing perfect. The ambulance that came to pick up uh, the baby... Jennifer went to meet after this event happened and asked them, what did you do? Did you give the baby CPR? Did you give the baby oxygen? And they said there was nothing we could do. We did nothing. They did not do CPR, no oxygen. They said the baby was dead. But the baby suddenly by itself came to life as the baby came to the hospital. Completely normal. 
So spiritual scientists like myself want to know how that happened, right? I want to know what happened. So I began to ask questions. I went back to the prayer coach and said, tell me every single thing that happened there at that birth. I'm looking for the keys to the kingdom. She said, well, the baby is born dead. Again, no, no fault to the home birth, but the baby is born dead. And of course the aunts, uncle, not uncles, the aunts and sisters were there and they were saying, call 911. They were getting upset. But Jennifer had been studying the word of God about her legal right to have a healthy baby and a healthy childbirth. So when the baby is born dead, her husband who did not come because he worked Sundays could not come to church. She knew that he was not at the place of faith that she was. So when the baby was born dead, she put her hand in her, this is what the prayer coach told me, Jennifer put her hand in front of her husband's face and said, don't you say a word, this baby is fine. Now you can hear her faith, right? And that is the moment, that was the key right there. She knew the husband being the head of the house, if he would have said and came into agreement with that picture, it would be over with. But she understood kingdom law and she knew what the Bible said and that was the, that was the statement, right? If anyone believes in their heart, the Bible says, whosoever, if anyone believes in their heart what the Word of God says and speaks and believes what they say, that mountain shall be moved, Mark 11, 23. And she believed in her heart. When she closed her eyes, she saw a healthy baby. She didn't see a, a baby that wasn't normal. She saw a healthy baby, and that baby came alive. So that was an amazing story, don't you think? that the power of God brought that, that baby back to life all by itself because of some things Jennifer did we're going to talk about. But that's an amazing story of faith. And we like to celebrate the stories of faith. But this series is going to talk about what happens on the other side of faith. In other words, did God just choose to do that? Or is there some things that Jennifer had responsibility to do to enjoy the benefits of the kingdom of God? Now, Jennifer studied the word diligently. Drenda coached her. We had material. She studied. She memorized scripture. She allowed herself to become totally persuaded. That's called faith in what the Bible says. She was not moved by circumstances. She was firmly convinced that the word of God was true, and she stood her ground saying no to the circumstances and saying yes to what God said. And that's why that girl's here today. But she had a part to play in that. Do you understand what I'm saying? She had a part to play in that. And we're going to talk about that because so many Christians don't get that part. They trust God, so to speak. They're looking for God to do things, but they don't know their responsibility to make sure it works together. Jesus said that whatsoever you bind on earth, heaven backs up. What you loose on earth, heaven backs up. Heaven, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Heaven cannot move in the earth realm unless you release heaven. Did you understand? You know that. And so we have to know how this thing works to enjoy the benefits of the kingdom. It's amazing. 2 Corinthians 1.20 says this, For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. Meaning you have access. You are now a son and daughter of the house. You are a citizen in Christ. You have access to the entire estate. God has already given you everything you You have the entire thing. Stop the, stop the begging. Stop the tears. Stop the crying. Stop, stop the begging. You don't have to beg for something you already have. Every promise is already yes. This is what changed Drenda in our lives. We began to find that, wait a minute, the Bible's given us very specific promises that are already fulfilled. They're already ours. We have a legal right to those things. We don't have to beg God. He does not make off-the-cuff decisions that you should be blessed and you should be healed. He's already made that decision 2,000 years ago in Christ. When you begin to learn that, it's like if someone was in your house stealing your possessions, you would not stand for that. You would, you would call the sheriff to enforce the law. This is the law of the kingdom. And so when the enemy comes to mess with you, you say, oh, excuse me, pardon me for a minute. Paragraph 7, subsection E, I'm talking like an attorney, you know. God. Jesus said in the wilderness when he was tempted, what did he say? It is written. It is written. Now you have to become your own attorney. 
You have to learn the word of God. You have to learn your rights. Otherwise, the enemy will steal you blind. Because he's going to press against that until you stand against him. He's going to try to take whatever he can. The Bible says he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But you have the legal right in the earth realm to uphold righteousness. What the kingdom, what the king of the kingdom says is right. You've been anointed, and you are anointed to enforce, or as Mark 16 says, to set captives free, to lay your hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Though you live amongst the enemy's territory, nothing by any means shall harm you. That's you, friend. That is you. Amen. Understand that. So we saw this story happen, but we're talking about the other side of faith, the part we have to play, the part we have responsibility over to work with God. God works with us, amen? We're in the earth realm, he works with us. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.